everyone. It's Rachel with Rachel Super Cute Creations. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit later than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I was asked last night if I would do some projects with some piano paper. Um, and quite a few of my customers bought piano paper in my live sale last night. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play with some piano roll paper. So for those of you who are coming in, please go over on the right-hand side and say hello. And piano paper um, comes in a variety of colors. Um, and it's really fun to play with. Um, it's thin, um, very much like craft paper, but it has sort of a glassine effect to it. Um, so that's kind of what um, I like about it. And you can use it in a lot of different ways. Um, the cool thing about the piano paper is a lot of times there's words. Um, and then, of course, this gorgeous um, holes in which they play the music on. So um, what we're going to do is I got out my scrap box today and decided we'd go ahead and play with this a little bit. Um, the only bad thing about piano paper is that it does like to roll up. So um, I typically use my paper cutter to cut the paper. Um, you can use scissors or whatever you want, but for me, um, using my paper cutter seems to be the best option. So you can work with whatever size you want to work with. A lot of times I try to work with kind of eight and a half by 11 or just a little bit bigger. Um, if you are working with the words along the side, you're going to want to kind of pay attention um, to where you want to cut it. And then I also try to cut it where I'm not on um, where the perforations are so it doesn't rip. And you can't, I mean, it can't be perfect. So we're just going to cut this piece. Hi, everybody who's coming in. Please say hello. Um, I apologize again that we started late today. Um, I ended up having my mom, who um, ended up going and getting her today. She's leaving to go to Florida. So um, she came down to my house and my brother picked her up. Okay. So I'm just trying to get some things off of my desk so we can get working. All right. Oh, I do want to show you, though. There is so, if you buy a roll, and I've used this for a lot of projects. Let's see if I can get the end off of this. Look at how much paper's on these. I mean, there is so much paper on these rolls. Hi, Emma. How are you? Sorry I'm late. I planned on coming on about three hours ago, but I ended up having to go get my mom today. So she just left and I was just able to get organized enough to come on and do a video. Okay, so a couple things I want to show you. First of all, I love using this, pa this paper on things like Manila file folders. So these are some old vintage folders. Um, and we're going to make some ornaments out of these tonight. I'm going to show you how to make ornaments. Um, but all I did is I glued the two pieces of the um, man manila folder together. So it makes a nice, heavy cardboard. And these are old, very, very, very old. Um, I used, if you looked at some of my other videos, when I made those scrap containers. Um, so... And then I have this template that I'm going to use, and we will make an ornament to start. Okay. So all I'm going to do, and you can, I mean, this is just going to be a simple circle ornament, but you could definitely um, use a cookie cutter. I've used cookie cutters before to trace around to make ornaments. Um, if you watched my video last year, I used um, the bird shape cookie cutter that I had and made some cool bird journaling cards. Now, you don't have to use this as an ornament. 
but you could make it in an ornament shape and you could use it as a journaling card in your de December daily. Um, Hmm. Of course, I would get a pen that would not work. Well, we'll just make an indentation so I can cut. Is the music too loud behind me, guys? Is that bothering you? If it is, I can turn it off. I decided since I was going to, you guys asked me how you might be able to do some Christmas decorations or Christmas things with the piano paper, I'd put a little music on the back. So Emma, is that too loud? Too much noise? Nope, music's fine. Perfect, perfect. So um, you can get cookie cutters. You can, in fact, I might run and get a cookie cutter in a minute. We might do a bird-shaped one. Um, but these are just journaling cards, and this is just scraps. So if you don't have manila file folders, just get two pieces of cardstock, glue them together, make sure they're nice and dry before you start cutting them. Okay. All right. So here is my ornament or my journaling card. And I have another idea. Um, I have no idea how this is going to work out, you guys, but I have a thought. So I am going to, have you guys seen those country churches that are really popular right now? I don't know if anybody's seen that. That's like a really hot thing right now are those country churches. So I thought, wouldn't that be cool to make a journaling card that looked like a country church? So. We're going to give it a try tonight. I don't know what it'll look like. It might turn out horrible. That's okay. Now, if you don't have piano paper at home, you could use book pages. You could use music paper. Um, but I was asked, what can you do with this piano paper? So let me kind of show you. I've already done some tags. So all I did, I used the words on one side, and I used this on the other. And we're going to make a... Um, flip a reversible tag that goes over a page. We're going to do that tonight. Here is a base to make a um, pocket or a journaling card. Um, here's some little tags. So I had some little strips. Look at how cute these are. And all I did is just add. So I save all these little pieces like this because you can use them for little projects. All right. So, um, I typically use a glue stick, but I want to try something different. I have not tried Mod Podge yet, so we're going to give it a shot. Um, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but some of you who bought kits from me, I used my teeth, don't tell anybody. Um, some of you that bought kits from me got some Mod Podge in your kits, so we're going to try the Mod Podge. And I just put a little bit up here. Um, I want to use a brush that's not one of my expensive brushes. So hang on one second. Um, Mosh Podge is kind of rough or on brushes. So I don't use my good art brushes when I'm using Mosh Podge. Um, I need the Mosh Podge on something. I'm looking for just a scrap piece, guys. Sorry. Hang tight with me. Okay, here we go. All right. So my thought is, is I want to leave this back plain, but you could you could have this for the back if you wanted to. And I'm just going to take the Maj Podge and I'm going to put a healthy dose of Maj Podge on here. Because I want, when I lay this paper down, I want it to lay flat. Now, you are going to need your bone folder. And you especially want to make sure, oops, and I moved it around, so now I'm going to have Maj Podge on the back. You want to make sure your edges have plenty of Maj Podge on them. 
All right. So one of my favorite parts of the piano paper is these little dots. Oops. Um, I don't know why. I just love them. But I want to get as much texture as I can on this ornament. I apologize for the noise, guys. Okay. So I'm just laying it over the ornament how I want it. And then I'm going to get my bone folder that is somewhere on here that is my desk is such a mess. This isn't the bone folder I wanted. Oh, I can use this one, but this isn't really the one I wanted either. But and so I'm just gonna burnish this down really well. Now, if you have a brayer, which I do. If you have a brayer, I would use a brayer just to make sure you get that down really well. And then what I do is, <coughs> excuse me, I cut around the edge roughly and set it to the side to let it dry. It does not take long for it to dry, but you wanna make sure that it's dry and I already see up here see how there's not enough so you can kind of pull up and make sure that all of your little edges are down good so I'm just going to add a little more Maj Paj okay and we're going to let this one set to the side for a minute oh come on but while I'm doing that, I do want to put my hole in here. Okay, so I have my hole ready. I know it's hard to see with all the other marks. Okay, so now let's do our little church. And I'm going to do the same process. Um, so I'm going to leave this on here. This is kind of like the fold from the folder and I think that's going to give some texture to the front of my church. Whoops. It's probably way more than I needed, but So what's everybody up to tonight? Emma, are you the only one in here with me? Everybody's so quiet. Is anybody thinking about doing their December dailies? Let's see, how do I want this one? Let's see, Canadian Robin, hi, how are you? What's a December daily? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked, you guys. So a December daily is um, a huge thing that happens in December where people kind of create a journal and um, they're very simple journals that you can document what's going on in December leading up to Christmas. And um, if you guys want, I can dig mine out from last year. I didn't finish it and I'll tell you, some people are really good at it. And they finished theirs in December and they ended up doing journals um, for all of the days, all 25 days. Um, I think I only got to 10 days and I was okay with that because I'm just going to add to my December daily this year. Uh, but it's just a good way to document some things up until Christmas. Okay, so um, you do want to kind of play with this a little bit because it will start to kind of roll up your paper. 
Um, and just keep making sure you burnish it down really well. So I'm going to set that one to the side. Would love to see the journal. Okay. So I will grab it while this is drying for a second because I know exactly, I think, where it is. So the fun thing about December dailies is that you, um, you just continue to do things and add things. Ooh, maybe I don't know where my December daily is. I thought it was right here, guys. I'm sorry. Might have to dig it out. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Sorry about all the noise. Okay. So this was my December daily that I made last year. Um, and basically, um, you just document things that you want to document and you put in things like this was from my Christmas tree. This was the care instructions. This is how much I paid for my Christmas tree last year. There's a picture of my Christmas tree and here's just a little bit of journaling. And, um, you know, as I found like nostalgic candy, they liked, um, I added that, did some different flips, have some tucking. This is um, wrapping paper samples. So this is all the wrapping paper that I used last year because I'm a huge wrapping paper freak. <laughs> and so just little memories that I wanted to keep and um, did some journaling on the back of here. Um, here's some fabric from leftover from a stocking that I made, um, a Christmas card that I got in the mail that I cut the front off of and, you know, little tags. This was actually came from a Christmas card too. And I cut it out. Um, so just fun things. You can see here's day six. Here's a picture of my dogs, my dog. <laughs> and I wrote about her. And let's see, my daughter and the dogs and just a little cute. So I think I made it. This is my niece. Um, I made it to, oh, I love this one. Did this one on a guest check. December 12th. Oh, I made it farther than I thought I did. If I got happy mail like this came in happy mail from a friend, um, Loretta Fitzgerald sent me this. And so I added it. December 15th, my niece and my daughter made Christmas cookies. So I added the pictures in there. Just so I could remember some of these things. And so it's so fun to look back at this. And that's his. Oh. I must have skipped 17. Day 17, I didn't get to. I got to day 18. And that's as far as I got, which is a real bummer. So this year, I'm just going to start right here. And I'm going to do this year's as far and finish it up. So this will be 2018-19. Um, these are some cards that I got from my staff last year that I added in here um, that I just wanted to save. And so basically, it's just... In December, what are things that you want to remember? So is that helpful, you guys, to see that? That would be wonderful, Emma. And it's just fun to look back at. Like, I forgot some of those things from last year. So I'm just excited to be able to look back at that. Um, and usually what happens, you know what? I will do a December daily video, maybe next week. Um, because what you do, I have a December daily box. 
and it has all of my holiday stuff in it, all old Christmas cards and stuff like that. I got to get my other scissors, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, and what I do is I put it all in a box and then I keep that journal in that box on my desk. And every day um, when I come home from work, I set my timer and I spend 15 to 20 minutes working on a page and that's it. And you can see I can get it done in the early December, but as December goes on, it gets pretty busy. Okay. So here's my other ornament. All right. So my thought for this ornament Yeah, it is fun when you have lots of, um, you know, people around and activities and things like that. Definitely. Okay, so now I'm going to take some vintage photo. And I'm just going to ink around my edges a little bit. Just to give it some definition. And I'm also going to kind of go over the top. So the next thing I want to show you is you can use acrylic paint on these. So we're going to use some acrylic paint. I have some right here. Sorry, I kind of made a mess of that right there. A little tissue. And I'm going to show you how to make a really quick snowman. And I want to be able to see the paper behind it. So I'm not painting it, but I don't want to. And I want him kind of towards the bottom. And I'm just going to do his head. Okay. And now I'm going to kind of give him a hat. And this is a very thin paint. Um, this one that I'm using, this darker blue, is a Craft Smart plate paint. I don't recommend using Craft Smart paint. I have no idea why we bought it, um, but I'm trying to use it up. So I will need to do another coat of the Craft Smart. And I'm going to give him kind of a top hat look. He's going to have a big hat. I should have made him a little more even here. There we go. I'm going to give his brim. Sorry, guys. I have a hard time painting and talking at the same time. Okay. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in, and I'm just going to kind of put some wet paint in here. 
And then we're going to do a little bit of shading, which does not take much. Just kind of whitewashing this a little bit. So I'm just using a light blue. I'm keeping my dark blue on my on my paintbrush. But I'm adding a little bit of light for some shading. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to come in here with some black. And I'm just going to outline him. Here, water. And I'm going quickly, I'm keeping my brush fairly wet and I'm pulling because I don't necessarily have to have a really dark line. Are we um, buffering you guys or are we okay? Everybody's so quiet. I'm hoping that people can see me and we're not having internet problems. Okay, so we are celebrating the holidays with traditional Mexican food. Looking forward to great grands making ethnic. Oh, my gosh. I would love to have some ethnic um, Mexican food. I love ethnic Mexican food. You want to come to my house and make some? I love tamales. <laughs> I'm jealous. And so now I'm just taking a little bit of the bla grayish black, and I'm just kind of coming in here. You want to be careful not to make this too runny. I mean, because you don't want to end up with um, too much. If you make the piano paper too wet, you'll have some problems. Okay, so I've got his mouth done. I'm going to take some gold. And I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do some highlighting. Just to give him a little bit of sparkle. What you guys thinking so far? Tamales are for Christmas. Oh my gosh, I love tamales. You sure you don't want to come to Michigan, Emma, and make me some? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to put my nose in here. And I'm okay if a little bit of the blue is pulling in because it gives it a little bit of a of shading. And then I take and just add a little bit of my orange to my black. And that helps me with my outlining. And that's pretty much, I don't know if you can see this. So there's his little carrot nose. So I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my little eyes. Hi, 
How's that? And then I want to go ahead and put some holly. I want to put a little something right here on his hat. So So I'm just adding a little bit of black in and I'm just kind of making some little leaf shapes. I know it's hard to see and I'll come back in and do some highlighting. But this really is not difficult. We're just coming in here. I'm gonna get some black. We're gonna outline our little leaves here. Okay. I'll let that dry a little bit and I'll come back with some highlighted on the leaves. But while we're waiting, I'm going to put my berries. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white, and I'm just going to come in while this is wet. Oops, I didn't mean to put that much on there, and just put a little bit on there just to give it some highlight. Pull a little bit of this out. Okay. Oops, I got red on there. So I'm adding a little bit of white and then I'll go back in with my metallic green and go right over top of that to give it some shine. And then I'll come back and grab just a little bit of white and give it a little bit of, oops. What do you guys think? You just enjoy watching me paint? <laughs> what do you think? I think he's pretty cute. And if you get too much white, like I got too much white right there, it's fine. Just bring some blue back in. Do some shading. It'll dry. The thing about painting is, is you can always paint over. You, you can't make mistakes. So now, just kind of letting that dry for a second. So we'll let this one set for a minute, and then we'll go on to our little church. And we're not done. We're not done with these ornaments or these little cards that can go in our... So let's get our little church out. And how's everybody doing? Everybody's so quiet. Are you guys just like watching me? Or are you sleeping? Am I making, am I boring you to death? What's going on? Can't believe how quiet it is tonight. I feel like I'm all alone. Okay. All right. So for the church, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little whitewash, okay? So what is a whitewash? A whitewash is a little bit of paint and water. And you want the paint to be really, really thin. So we're just going to whitewash this because I want it to look like a church. So on the other one, we kind of vintaged it up, but this one, because it's a church, 
we're going to kind of make it vintage looking kind of a whitewashed but I still want that piano paper to come through okay And then what I want to do is to make it look like boards, I'm just going to do a little bit thicker, still the whitewash, but I'm only doing just, I'm going over it just in certain spots. So it's going to look kind of blotchy and that's the look I want because I want it to kind of look like boards and I want it to be, um, I want it to look like an old weathered church. Oh, hi, Mitzi. Oh, you are so sweet. Okay, so see how that kind of looks like boards? So we're going to leave it like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with a small brush. You guys have never done one of these churches, so bear with me, okay? I'm grabbing some gold paint. I know you probably can't see this very well but I'm specifically using gold because I know it's close to the color. Okay, I'm gonna come up here. See my little circle? All I did is make a circle. Okay, and now I'm gonna take some green and all I'm gonna do is make kind of a V, okay? So I'm making a V. I'm keeping it going the same way. I don't, I'm not changing the direction. All right. So there is part of my wreaths. You could use gesso, um, Emma. The only thing I'll, I'll be honest with you, the only thing I don't like about gesso is I don't like how it um it is gritty. To me and um, I so I don't I mean you could use it though I just don't like the grittiness okay so what I did you guys I used the same color green notice I didn't go get another green paint I used this metallic paint and I added just a smidge of black and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do we're gonna make lines that look like pine needles so all I'm doing is just doing really quick lines single and I'm kind of filling in this wreath okay oops and I'm kind of putting some out in different directions Is it looking like a wreath to you guys yet? What do you think? I'm gonna give you, give me just one second. I wanna make sure people know that I'm on. There's 10 of us on, but everybody's so quiet. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do Okay, same brush. Yeah, I'm using piano paper and I glued it to make a hard back thing. I glued it to um, two pieces of um, manila file folder. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that same green up here and I'm gonna add just a smidge of white to it. So we're gonna lighten it. So we now have another highlighting color. 
And let's see here. What do I want to do with this color? I'll lighten it just a smidge more. And I'm just kind of going, just kind of giving a couple of wisps in each area just to kind of fill it, make it a little bit thicker. Because I want a nice thick wreath. Can you guys see that? So there's the wreath. It's done. Now what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to put some berries on there. So I'm going to pull my red in and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to do little dots. Okay, so there's my cute little wreath. Oh, thank you, Juno. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're liking it. Okay, and then I love gold. I want to give it a little bit of sparkle and shimmer. So I'm going in and I'm just going to do a couple of wisps of gold just to give it some highlight. And I'm either doing one stripe or I'm doing a V. So I'm going to come back up so you can see it. And there, our wreath is done. Now, look it. I want to show you something. See how this is kind of coming up because it got too wet? Before it gets out of control because we're going to be putting more paint on, I want to go back in with my Maj Paj and I want to kind of Maj Paj that down. Okay. Oh, no. Look what I just did. Stuck my finger in that. Okay, that's okay. As I said, mistakes can be fixed. So I just smeared my berries, but that's all right. I'm going to come back in with my green. We're going to make a few more wisps right here. And I'll come back in and I'll put my berries back. If you get it quickly, you can usually wipe it off and fix your mistake. And only you guys will know I had a mistake there. Don't tell anybody, okay? I don't want anybody to know I made a mistake. I just came. Okay. I want it to look like there's a little bit of snow in here too. So I'm just going to, you guys, I kind of get carried away sometimes. And sometimes I do more than I need. Eh. Okay, there we go. Oh no, I'm stuck to my, okay. So there it is. I don't love these berries. I'm going to try to fix these too because I kind of smeared them. Okay. There we go. I like that better. Okay. So there is my wreath. Now what I want to do is I want to put some stained glass windows here and I want to put a door and that's it. That's all I'm going to do is just a basic country church. Okay. So I want my door to be red. So all I'm going to do is make kind of a U shape and I want it kind of watery. I don't want it to be real bright. And I have kind of a dry brush because I want to come back in 
and do some shading and some things in here. So I know it looks kind of messy right now, but I want it to dry in layers. I don't want to wet this too much and have problems later. And I'm pulling in, just pulling in a little bit of white, which is giving that kind of aged look. And it's taming down some of that red. Okay, so there's my door. What do you guys think? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just take some of this watered down white. I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of shading. Okay. Anybody else coming in? I need to take a drink. I've been talking so much. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this light blue. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm making a tall, skinny U-shape. Okay? And they don't have to be perfect. Here's my church windows. And we're going to make them stained glass. Okay, you see my windows? This one's just a smidge crooked. I can see it on the camera. It's hard for me to see because I normally paint right over. There we go. Okay, so there is. Now. What am I going to do to make these stained glass windows? I'm going to take and I'm just going to blob, starting with my gold. And now I'm going to go in and take my dark blue and we're going to just fill it in. So we're just adding little blobs of dots. I'm just being random about it. 
Mitzi, you're from Michigan? I'm from Michigan. I'm just putting blobs in there. I'm not. Is it looking like stained glass, you guys? As I said, I've never done one of these before. This is live on camera for you guys, just for you. And you can see I have a really dirty brush. I'm okay with that because it's blending some of the colors and I don't have to blend them. I'm just trying to fill in that stained glass. Okay. And remember, if you're going to do this, pull your brush. And pull fast. It's okay if it's not perfect. How does that look? Okay. So I think we need some door handles on here. A little thinner line there. And right now I'm just taking my black in and I'm just kind of making it a little grungy. Okay. And now I'm going to come in with pure white. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do some highlights. So what do you guys think? Okay, so this one needs a hole in the top too. I should have probably done that a little sooner. That's okay. So I've got my hole now in the top. We're going to kind of let that dry. We're going to come back to this guy. And what I like to do is I like to glitz up my, so this is some really cheap iridescent glitter glue. Um, now, if you're gonna use a brush, make sure you clean the brush quickly when you use this, because it will ruin your brushes. So I like to put it on his face. And then I like to kind of just do touches of his hat. 
I'm not sure if you can see that still wet, but it will leave some nice glitter. And the other thing is it makes it a little bit shiny there. So it pulls the color of the piano paper through. Now you could go around here and you could do glitter, um, which would be really pretty along the edge if you wanted to. There's lots of things you can do. Um, the other cool thing about this hat, I made this hat big so that if you wanted to, you could write the name of the person. You could put the reads or you could do something like that if you wanted. Well, that red was still a little bit wet. Darn it. It's all right. We'll fix it. Put a little more gold in here just to do some highlights. Okay. Now, the only thing I want to do is I want to do a little more outlining on his nose just to bring it. Just to give it a little more dimension. There we go. And then I always go back in with just a little bit of the pure orange again and just kind of do a little bit of highlighting. And then I usually will take a little bit of gold and just add it. And there we go. There is our snowman. Um, Robin, I would use, if I'm going to do a heavy duty, um, belly band, I use Fabri-Tac because it's a permanent adhesive. All right. So then from there, you could, I thought I had some twine in my drawer here next to me, but maybe I don't. Um. I have to go get some. So now you have this tag. So this could be used in your journal. Um, you could go on the back, right on the back of it, or you now have this cute little tag. Now this one, the last little bit I want to do, and then I'll I'll get away from painting for a little bit. I probably bored you guys to death. is I do want to go around the edges of this. Just to give it a little outline. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you wanted to, you could put a cross above here. 
Mitzi, I've used two together. I've used the glue stick and glue, um, and that works pretty well. Um, I do want to add a little bit of glitz to this one, and then I promise we'll be done. I'm going to take some of this glitter glue, and I'm just going to touch it in spots just to give it a little bit of sparkle because to me, Christmas is a lot of sparkle. Okay, so there is our little church. What do you guys think? I'm glad you like it, Mitzi. Yeah, they're really, they're cute. I'm going to grab some twine so you guys can see what it looks like. Well, I can't believe I don't have any. Can you believe I do not have any um, red or green twine? But look at I found this beautiful glitzy eyelash trim that I think my friend Janice gave me. So this would be pretty in here. I'm just going to loop it. Look at how gorgeous that is. And then I can just tie a knot up here. And I have a little hanger. So that is so cute. And if I wanted it to go in my journal, I would just, I would still put that on there and leave it on there because I just think that's cute. You could also take this little church, you could make it a pocket. So you could tuck things behind it. And then we could put some of this gold tinsel on the snowman too. Make my hole just a smidge bigger. And there's this one. This one is so cute, too. I love that. All right, so we'll set these to the side to dry. So that's one way you can use piano paper. And I, I mean, I just love how this church came out. I don't know if you guys can see the details very well in the camera, but you can actually see all the little piano paper ribs in here, little holes. And you can definitely see them in his hat. So that's cute. So we'll go ahead and set these over to dry. Oh my gosh, look at how cute this looks on my da December daily. Look at how cute. Love it. Okay. So. get this mess cleaned up a little bit and let's show you how to do a few other things for those of you who don't want to paint well I lied I'm sorry 
I want to show you one more time how to do. So I, you could take a tag just like this. And we're going to cutesy it up real quick. It would look cute with a tiny plaid bow on the top. I love that idea. So I'm making my circle again, kind of in the middle, but kind of not in the middle. Making my little V shapes or my little heart shapes. And these ones I'm making a little bit fatter. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the little bit darker. And I'm just kind of filling in. Messily. Okay. And now I'm going to go in with a little bit lighter. And I'm going to twist my brush and we're going to just just put some, just making it very messy looking. Now I'm going in with pure gold. And I'm just doing some highlights. That's it. Now we'll do our berries. Anybody can do these, you guys. You can do this. These wreaths are so easy. This time I'm going to alternate between three and one. I'm just kind of spreading them out. And there we go. We have a tag that's done. You, If you had a Christmas stamp, you could stamp something at the bottom. And you have this adorable little tag. So that's a really easy tag. Now, if you don't want to use paint, you could use a marker. But look at that. That is so cute, you guys. And wouldn't this be cute on a package, too, even if we're not going to use it in our journals? I love that. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make um, a reversible tag. And so how you do this is you take your, um, I just use cardstock. All that's behind here is manila cardstock. Um, and I covered both sides with the piano paper. I cut two tags exactly the same. And you want to make sure they're the same because you're going to um, make a flip on this. So what you need for this project is you need some scrap fabric. 
some muslin, some white fabric, something. So I have this like tannish color, which will go. And I'm going to cut a piece about as big as this top part, but a smidge smaller. Whoops. And then you want it about a half inch wide. So what I'm doing, I'll show you here, is I'm going to create a hinge by putting this over the top. Now you can see it's still a little bit too big, so I'm taking about a quarter of an inch off, tearing it, and now my hinge should work here. So it's perfect. What I'm going to do is get my Fabri-Tac. I'm going to put a little line of bead of glue here, adhere my strip on the front, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put a bead of glue right here, and I'm going to fold this over. Okay. So what I've done is I've created a hinge. Oops. Let it dry a little bit longer than I did <laughs> before you open it. All right. So we're going to let that set a minute. And while that's setting... Then you want to open it up and you're going to put this other piece on the inside. So you're hinging it on the inside and the outside. Remember, we need to cut a little bit off. And we're going to let that dry for a second while I clean up my table a little bit. Everybody's really quiet tonight. I must be putting everybody to sleep. So here's some of the ornaments that I made in wood. Um, you may have seen some of my time-lapse videos. I think these are really cute. I've decided to make kits, and I've already done all the drawing for you guys. Um, so these are going to be in my Etsy shop soon. Um, but if you're interested in one of these kits, you get all four ornaments with the drawing on them, all the paints you need, and the two brushes, and I photocopied mine so you can use it kind of like a paint by number. Um, these kits are going to be $20 plus shipping shipped to you. So um, it's a great deal, and it would be really fun to do with kids, grandkids, or just to do for yourself. Okay, so here we are. We now have this. And what I like to do, you guys, and you have to be very careful, is I kind of pull because you want this to lay nice and flat. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, Robin. I just, I, everybody's just so quiet. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what people, you, I'm either putting you all to sleep or something. Okay. So here's what I love about these. These reversible tags you can now decorate, but look what happens. All I have to do, let me get a blank page here. All I have to do is take this and put it over the page. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to put a clip on it. I don't have to do anything. And there it is. You can use it as a bookmarker or you can use it to journal on. Now, then you can flip it either way. So what you do is you want to decorate the sides. So if I had ephemera on my desk, which, which I don't. Let me see. I've got to have some ephemera somewhere here. Oh, darn it. I just got my hands in some paint. Let me find some ephemera. Okay. 
All right. So here's a piece of my ephemera. And it probably, this is pretty bulky, so this would not be something I would typically put on if I was going to flip and have it on the inside. But, but in this case, we could attach this ephemera piece. And I'm going to attach it in an L shape because here's the cool thing. I can take one of my tags, my tall tags that I made, and I can stick it in there. And I've got a pocket. I could take a small tag. I made some small tags and I could stick one in there um, for journaling or something like that. And then on this side, I can still embellish. So if I wanted to... I just cleaned out all of my embellishments off my desk. So they're not within arm's reach. So let's say I wanted to add, you know, more like that. To really go with, let's see what I got here. Okay, this is all the ephemera I have on my desk. So we have to figure something out here. Okay, so this actually, this kind of goes with this. So I could go on the inside here. And I could do a little collage piece. Let's see what we have. Telling you guys, make these tags, have them all made up so all you have to do is decorate them when you're ready to put them in a journal. So all I'm doing is just adding a little paper collage here and you can journal right on here. And then for this one, I'm, I'm going to put just a stamp at the bottom, a little stamp collage. All these stamps. So let's see here. What's a color from the front that I can pull? Okay, so there's a little collage. This one, I'm only going to do a small collage because I don't want to cover up all this beautiful piano paper.
I have so many stamps. I need to start using these up. So for this one, I'm going to just make a little mini pocket. I'm going to tie the stamp into it since we had stamps on the other ones. And then hoping this, yep, it sure will. So this little tag will fit in here perfectly. I'll let it dry just a smidge before I put it in there because I don't want my tag to get stuck. There we go. So we now have this reversible tag. So if I have this on a page, so let's pretend this is my page. It's going to hang over the top like this. Here's going to be it. So I, then I turn the page. This is what we're going to see on the back. If I don't like it like that, I can take it off and I can use it this way. What do you guys think? You like those? Guys are so quiet. I don't know if you like these things or not. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself. Love the tags. Okay, good. All right. Get this stuff off of here. Give myself a little more room. Um, and then for this one, we're just going to make a simple pocket. So all I did is cover some craft cardstock. With the piano paper. I'm gonna get my oops, my corner rounder. And I'm going to corner round my edges. And then I'm going to take some of this paper and we're going to make a pocket. Now, this paper is kind of weak. So if I'm going to make a pocket, what I do, oops, just try not to rip that. What I do is I like to reinforce my edge by folding it over. So I'm folding over the edge and I'm gluing that down. And I do that because if you're putting things in and out, more than likely you're gonna be putting things in and out of that pocket, it needs to have a nice firm edge. If you have just a single edge of that paper, it's not gonna work very well. Then all I do is I glue And I want to keep the word love showing just because I think it's cute. So I'm going to go ahead 
And I got way too much glue on here. And then I'm just going to trim around here. Okay. And now we have this cute, adorable little pocket. And you can embellish these pockets too. You know, you could put something like that or or I this would be really cute to put this on the top, wouldn't it? I think I'm going to do that. Especially since there's three birds there and it says love. And now all you have to do is put some tags in your pockets. There's some journaling cards. And isn't that cute? Absolutely, it would be cute to slip a bookmark in here. This would be a great pocket for the inside of a book. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, if you want to, you know, if you have a book that you really like or something like that, you could put this in the front of it and you could have your bookmark in there. But wouldn't this be cute also to, let's see if I have one. Well, I think I moved them all out of here. Well, let's pretend this is a gift card. Wouldn't this be cute to put a gift card in it and give this to somebody? Piano paper is all different colors, you guys. I even have white piano paper. Um, I sell piano paper, and um, I have tons of colors of piano paper. Um, but um, tonight and tomorrow, well, actually tonight, yesterday and tonight, um, I am selling piano paper for $5 a roll plus shipping. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, just send me a message. You guys, I really love this pocket. I think this pocket is adorable. So these would be so easy to make with your piano roll paper. So here are the projects that we made tonight. And it's been an hour and 28 minutes. Um, so I am going to get off um, in just a few minutes because... I do have to work tomorrow, but I want to show you what we made today in this disaster. Besides making a mess on my desk. Oh, sorry. And I'm dropping stuff all over. Let me just some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. So here is what we made tonight. We made these two ornaments which you guys asked me about yesterday. We made this adorable pocket and we made this reversible tag. But these would be great bookmarks too. If you ever, someone who loves to read, um, these would be great to make because they could use it as a bookmark. And then you could have some little plain tags in here. Um, what I love to do as a, I, I'm a avid reader and I'm an avid writer as well. Um, so what I would love in here would be um, some of uh, some. Let's see, how would I do this? I think I would do it like this. I would love some little note card pieces in here because I could put little quotes that I liked from the book and I could write them in there and keep them in there and pull them out. I always keep a lot of little um, note cards and things. So that would be really cool too. And you could tea dye those so that they matched the, the beautiful um, patinaed paper that these um, piano rolls are. Yeah, oh, it's a complete disaster. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit of an open space, but yeah, it's a mess, an absolute mess. 
So anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, for those of you who are who bought from me last night, um, I will be sending invoices out within the next 20 minutes. Um, and if people pay um, tonight, I will be getting those shipped out tomorrow. If not, they'll go out in the mail on Tuesday. Um, I will put my two Etsy shops in the link in the feed because I have a big sale going on in both shops right now and it ends tonight. So if you are looking for some gifts or looking for some crafting supplies, you'll want to check that out. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything we did today? And it actually says 48 hours for that first one, but it's really 24 um, because it ends tomorrow. That was from yesterday. And I hope you guys liked these projects. Absolutely. In fact, I will probably go around and sew around these. Um, you can sew the piano paper as long as, well, actually, you can sew it. Um, I've seen people, I have not done it. But I have seen people sew just the plain piano paper. Um, you have to be really careful and you have to use a, a small needle, um, like a silk needle. Um, if you back it on something, you can use you can sew it without a problem. That's not an issue at all. Um, I have seen people take this also, and I'll show you real quickly um, and ruffle it which is really cool. That, that would be a cool to attach to like a belly band or something like that. So you can take this. All right, sorry. So you can take this. Oh, thank you, Emma. <laughs> I need to take care of myself. Okay, so if you take this paper and you start making a ruffle, so I'm just folding it back and forth on itself, leaving a little bit. Sorry, I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can, but. Okay, so you can ruffle this just like you would fabric or anything else. Um, and you can make as deep a pockets as you want. But then what I've seen, oops. I've seen people sew this to make the ruffle like this. So you can sew it down the middle. You can sew it down the sides and create this. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can take. Um, get my glue back open. Sorry, guys. You can glue it. Just put a little dot on each of these little ruffles to seal them. You can do it just like this. I've done this plenty of times with paper. Um, but I like the weight of, of the ruffles from the piano paper because it's so thin. And just okay. Whoops, I missed one. So you can ruffle it up like that. And you could use it this way as a pocket if you wanted to. Um, or you could, you know, use it in bits and pieces here. The other cool thing, though, if you glued down this side, this side, and this side, look at, you could take little pieces of ephemera and you could stick it. 
in these pockets and they're kind of like those Tim Holtz pockets. But if you had small ephemera or you had like postage stamps or something like that, that you wanted to just kind of put as a decoration in your journal, look at how cute that is. So that is another idea and that would be adorable. And you could even do something like that on the back of one of these if you wanted to and then have the pocket behind it. Okay, so you use it for techie tickets. And so, yeah, so that would be, you know, you could do this ruffled idea for it and that would be really pretty. Um, I've seen people use this for um, like a table runner and they've sewn them. Um, I like it if you ruffle it up and use it this way, you know, you could take and fold this down like I showed you before. And there you've got this pocket and you've got this whole new design right here. So this would be a really cool pocket. You'd have all and you still could stick postage stamps and things in it this way. And you would have a pocket up here. So that could be a really cool idea too. I kind of like that idea. You could straighten this up then. And make that, make that a pocket. So I hope you guys like those ideas. That gives you a few ideas to play with your, your piano roll paper. Um, I will try to think of some new ideas and try to come up with some more things for you guys. And please check me out. I'm going to try to do every Sunday. Um, hopefully next Sunday it'll be a little bit earlier than today. My plan was between 4 and 5 o'clock, but um, as I said, that didn't happen. So um, I came out a little bit later because I know some of you were waiting to see what I was going to do. If you have not, if you didn't catch me, um, hopefully you'll see this on a replay. And please give me thumbs up if you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. That's fine. Um, it still helps me build my channel. Um, and I'm really hoping to get to 5,000 subscribers. Um, so please, please, please do that. Um, if you haven't checked out my Etsy shop, check out my Etsy shop. If you would like to follow me on Facebook, I have a Facebook page, um, which is Super Cute Creations. I'll show you the page. So this is how um, you do it. It's a capital S, super, oops. Cute Creations is all one word. If you want to follow me, um, I do a lot of my little painting projects and things like crafty ideas. Um, I just started it, so I will be doing more. I have a little lot of, um, I'm hoping to have more time lapse videos in here. Um, so you'll get to see me doing some painting and some other crafting. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And I hope um, you all had a great time. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye.